Hi, I'm Hollis Turnbow and I want to welcome you again to Quilt as Desired. In this episode, I want to take all the mystery out of using stencils and the quilting motif that you'll put on uh, your quilt to make it especially yours. Lots of information here, so stay with me. Welcome, I'm Hollis Turnbow discussing quilting design. As I previously said, it's always interesting and we get a little chuckle about reading books about quilt making and patterns. They give very specific instructions about how to construct the piece, either patchwork, applique, or whatever the method might be. But then you read fully to the back page of the book and you see those three words, quilt as desired and no instructions are there. And that's what I want to do, is to give you inspiration, ideas, and sources about achieving those three words, quilt as desired. I'm glad you're here. Let's begin taking that step downward into the ultimate goal is finishing the quilt. Because as you know, a quilt is not a quilt until it's finished and quilted and bound. I want to talk about inspiration next because I do recommend that while you're doing the patchwork, the applique, or whatever the method might be, that back in your head you're still thinking about or you're thinking about how will it indeed be quilted because that may control how you piece, how you press your seams. For instance, if you're going to quilt in the ditch, you need to press seams so that you'll have a ditch to quilt in. So that's what I want to talk about is where's the inspiration at this point and then the next step will be the actual sources that we might get into it. Inspiration can come from any place and this is not the actual quilting design or, or marking that you'll actually put on but it's at least a general idea of what you might do. I have here on the table some sources, some old stencils and if you're fortunate to be able to find in an antique shop someone who has a box of, of uh, quilt making supplies out, out of their closet. There are always treasures to find. Here are some old ones that were handmade because stencils, which is really our ultimate goal in talking here and marking our quilt, were not created until sometime in the 1900s. And they started with a, a, a man in uh, Michigan who uh, worked for a uh, shoemaking company and they modified the machine that cut the holes in men's wingtip shoes so that it would go faster and they used that to cut the slits into the stencils. These however are homemade, made at home. The designs probably came out of magazines or newspapers of the period of time because that's the way that quilt makers had to get designs for both patchwork applique. So in all of the magazines, especially those that related to farm life, you would find patterns each month and then the stencil design. But then you had to uh, do something to get them in a form in which you could put the design onto the actual quilt. So here are some examples of that one. Just simply holes cut out. And I want to say at this point, the difference in template, which is often confused with stencils, and stencils is that a stencil will be cut out like this into slots or holes in which you can mark through. Here, however, is the template, which is a solid piece, solid design, in which you could mark around it. Templates are mostly used for the patchwork geometric designs, but could very easily be cut in cardboard as these were and used to mark your stencil design because all you need is the outline of it and then can always add the uh, intricate parts later. So here's some examples of 
stencils that were made at home. It's always fascinating when you find these because very often the quilt maker would have added information on it about where the stencil came from. Aunt Ida's favorite stencil, it might say, and then the plus is if it should have a date. Here's another example in which a design was just simply drawn on white paper glued to newsprint to give it a little bit of stability. And I went through and read on the back. It's rather fascinating that it, it was talking about uh, the period of World War II uh, because there's some references here, although there was no date on it. And the place where they emphasize in the map is Libya and Egypt. I thought that was very interesting in uh, this particular time. So it was the whole Mideast area. So these are ways that we can date those stencils. And as I said, it's thrilling when you find one that has some indication about where it came from and the period of time that it was used and even who used it. An excellent source for that is a book that was published some years ago about quilting designs from the Amish. These might have been Amish stencils because they, Amish uh, women and Mennonite women were very prolific quilters and they would create designs. They were very proprietary to the family and in many cases you can tell a, a design, uh, the style of the design, you can relate that to a particular family, as this indeed book has. So it has all of the designs in it. The situation that we find ourselves though when you're using uh, designs from books or magazines is how do we then transfer that into some kind of form, as you see here, in which we can use it, we can mark it then. And I'll be talking about that later on in the, in the series. So where are our inspirations? I have here an old red work design. I like this because these were all done on a, a chain sewing machine, very popular uh, uh, many years ago, truly a vintage here. I might not use this exactly the way that it's shown here, but yet I would find existing designs or stencils and use them to create this kind of a motif in here. So again, it's the inspiration and not the actual design. I would, however, depending on the circumstances, redraw this into some form that I could use. Another very interesting piece, this was brought back from Croatia by my granddaughter, uh, a piece of uh, needlework. I don't know how the intention would be to finish this, but I looked at it and I saw again an inspiration for a design. So I would look for an existing stencil that might do this little curly cue, maybe a flower to go in the corner. So it's a foundation, it's a basic uh, idea for me to use. Sources can come from any place. Here's a tapestry. I like the flow of the outer border. So again, I might take that idea and find existing designs then and create my own. Another piece of lace. Plenty of sources. Here's a, here's a section from a piece of, uh, of covering. This was an armchair cover on a couch. Excellent design elements in here. And if I felt confident and had the ability, I could take this and make actual stencils from it. Then again, another piece that came from uh, Croatia. I might not like it totally, but the border has an interesting concept. So I will then go and look for existing stencils or other designs that might use that. And then another interesting piece came from a, probably a summer spread uh, because this is only one block. I don't know whether the monogram would be all B's or it had the A, B, C's. But I did take this and it was a little bit irregular and I created a totally new pattern for it. To even it up, made it continuous lines so it would be easy to machine quilt. So these are sources of inspiration for you. 
Don't overlook what you might see in the newspaper and the magazines. Piece of lace. It would give me an idea of a flow that I might use. Another piece of lace work. I picked up the newspaper one day, and here is a, an article about the Academy Award, and I was struck by this particular design here. Excellent idea, and there are many uh, commercial quilting stencils that might give you that same flow. So while you're looking at these, finding these designs, that might give you an idea then how ultimately you might uh, do the actual quilting on the piece. Another source that you might use is take an existing design as we have here. This was a stencil that I created but yet I needed a larger piece. So I took it, took and drew this down, took it to my copy machine, enlarged it until it was the size that I needed. So the sources are everywhere. We don't really have to look for it, but what we do have to do is learn to see, actually look at what we see, and then use that as inspiration for what we're doing. Other sources which are readily available, our quilt magazines do contain them, design very often the quilting design for it. Here's a book filled with designs that relate specifically to the patterns in the book. Another book here, designs are in here relating to the examples, and then other sources that are uh, available for us. Children's coloring books. I always get a chuckle when I read on the internet someone is looking for a specific design and immediately someone writes back and says try a children's color book. Have you ever gone to the store and looked for a children's color book nowadays? It's all fantasy and such. It's nothing like the good old-fashioned stuff that we did before. But again, a very excellent source of information that we might have there. I hope this gives you some idea. The bottom line here that I want to emphasize, though, is while you're doing the patchwork, the applique, be thinking about that next to the last step, and that's how will it be quilting, and what design, what motif. Because the quilting should enhance what you do, should enhance the patchwork, be compatible with the patchwork, and make it one full unit. And the most important thing is make it completely yours. Now don't go away because I'll come back and I'll talk a little bit more specifically about quilting stencils or quilting designs, measuring those, uh, selecting the appropriate design, and then adjusting those to fit the space that you have. So stay with us. Uh, sharpen your pencil, you know, while I'm gone. Uh, get a drink of water and come back for more inspiration and information about those final three words, quilt as desired.